welcome to PCR London Valves 2024. My name is Jennifer Franke from Heidelberg and uh, with me here today is um, Felix Kreidel from Kiel in Germany and Azim Latib from New York. So welcome both of you. Um, you. Let's get started. So would both of you think, or maybe you Felix, first of all, do you think there's a real need to improve imaging as we, we use it currently in tricuspid tier? I think we have a beautiful imaging tool. TOE gives us excellent images, but certainly not on all of the patient, patients. We know that the tricuspid valve is anteriorly in our chest, which makes it difficult for ultrasound beam in some cases, especially if you have mechanical valves in the aortic position, for instance. And then a potentially simple case can go south if, because imaging is not good. So we do need some add-on to be able to treat these patients where our standard imaging is not functional. And I guess uh, you assume, I mean, you do have experience, right? I think I heard for the last two years, at least, you've been using 3D intracardiac echocardiography as a potential, I think, improvement for advanced imaging. Can you share some of your experiences there? Yeah, yeah of course, Jennifer. So, you, think, you know, like Felix said, imaging is really the key to getting good outcomes with tricuspid interventions, right? And so about two years ago, when 3D ice catheters became available in the United States, we started, I would say, maybe dabbling with it, trying to see, you know, would it add to our workflow? Would it help us? Would it overcome those challenges that you mentioned where you just can't see the leaflets, right? You can't tell where you are. You can't tell you have enough leaflet in. And so we started using it in our procedures, initially slowly in cases where we had challenges completing the procedure with TOE. And over the last two years, it's changed for us. So we've gotten to a point now where we have added an ice catheter in every tricuspid tear procedure. And the reason being is because now we, we find that the procedure is shorter, we more efficient uh, in how we, we guide the procedure, but also I leave the procedure with that security. I really saw leaflet grasping. I really saw the leaflet going into the device. Yeah, and I mean, 3D ice is entering, I think, more and more to Europe also. I mean, that's, that's great news. Um, how do you see it? How would it uh, change your clinical practices as it is now? Yeah, very good question. I mean, we still do not have a reimbursement, so it's always a special indication. But whoever has been in a procedure and ha has witnessed how it can improve imaging quality, it's, it really is kind of unethical not to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. So in our situation now, where we are very well-trained TOE imagers, I see ourselves pulling out an ice probe when we run into borders. I mean, we have our structured imaging windows, our imaging protocols, and if we are not sure about leaflet insertion, as LDA is really what everybody fears, I see us using ice, um, and be it 2D or 3D, obviously 3D with all its implications of MPR, live MPR is what you want to have but you want to have an imaging source that goes to the leaflets, to the device, and just gives you an unshadowed, clear view on that very crucial moment of any leaflet grasping intervention there. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, thinking beyond, I mean, the complexity of the tricuspid intervention, is there anything else in the workflow where you think this is also a game changer on the way we typically would do a procedure? So I think, you know, if you think of tricuspid tear, so what we've been doing recently, Felix, is we, you know, we'll, as we're doing the tear and we steer down to the valve, we'll actually then go with our TE probe transgastric and we'll use it for orientation. And then we'll just leave it there. Okay. And then we'll use the ice probe to actually cross the valve, watch ourselves grasp the leaflets and actually close using ice. And then just go back to the TE briefly to look at orientation, watch the leaflets come in. And so you can imagine how in that workflow, it really shortens that the period you're trying to be sure you have leaflet insertion. But I think as we've used it more and as tricuspid interventions become more popular and more common, you know, we now have both a repair device available and a replacement device available, mm -hmm. both in Europe and the US. So, so will you be kicking out the TOE team and probe eventually or soon even? So, you know, right now, no. I think... Um, you know, it's important having both as you're learning. And my advice to the colleagues watching this is to use both. Um, but I can imagine a world where in the future, as we become more agile and get 
better at using it, where maybe I can do a tricuspid tear procedure just with a sedation and not general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And it's not about kicking out, I mean, it's taking the probe out, but it's not about kicking out the echocardiographer. And I think that's sure. super important because to be able to use all the 3D functions of the ice probe, you really need to partner and have an imaging partner with you in the room. Absolutely. I mean, it sounds like great innovations are currently happening in the tricuspid space. So just want to thank you guys. Thank you, Felix. Uh, thanks, Yazim, for taking the time and discussing this with me. Um, I really hear that there's a clear need for advanced imaging in this space. Um, from what you um, have experienced um, at your hospital, I see, you know, efficiency. I hear, you know, precision in the procedure and just, a, I think, a shift in the workflow and how we, how we handle these procedures, right? So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.